Hi and welcome back to my channel. I know it's been quite a few minutes since I um, kept uh, going with the rising sign videos because I kind of went nearly halfway and then stopped for a bit. Um, I had to have a bit of time out because I was sort of wavering between Queen of Wands and Ten of Wands and yeah, I had to give myself a bit of a break. So um, anyway, I'm back on track and yeah, and so I'm going to continue with the um, rising sign videos. This one's for Libra Rising and we're going to be going through the same um, decks that I've been doing the last few months um, since I started. So it's first four astrological decks that, that are going to um, look into um, what might be in your chart that you can focus on for this month or the rest of this month. I'm a little late doing these um, this time around. Um, after the astrological ones, we'll be going with some um, numerology guidance cards. Uh, I'm going to have it all in the description box anyway, so if you want to check which decks or, or which um, they're yeah, in order. So, yeah, then um, we'll get some abundance messages for you guys. Oh, they're all over the place. Hang on, there we go. And then we'll get, um, we'll finish with some guardian angel messages. Okay, so there's three retrograding planets at the moment. Um, Mercury, Mars and Uranus. Now, um, I think Uranus will be stationing direct at the la in the last week of this month. Mercury, I think, will be stationing direct before that, I think on the 19th or the 18th. Um, but we've still got the effects of Mars retro because that might also be something you'll hear, oh, they're out of retrograde. Well, there's also the phases um, before and after. I think if you haven't seen my videos before, um, with any planet that goes retrograde, there's always the pre-shadow phase time, then the regular, the the, the what's known as the the um, retrograde time that everyone knows about, and then there's the post-shadow. So the pre and the post-shadow phases are also where you're going to feel the effects, and sometimes more intensely than the actual retrograde. So um, and that can, excuse me, that can be um, a like a couple of weeks so really <coughs> excuse me <coughs> oh gee sorry about that uh, i i've been the this throat thing um only happens when i'm doing the videos lately it's just been a, i've noticed it with some other readers as well on on um youtube that um they've sort of had a throat chakra thing going on too and seemingly only when they're doing videos my my guess is it's got to do with Uranus and Mercury specifically because Uranus wants to be, wants their voice heard. Mercury is about communicating in all different ways, including the voice, um, whether electronic or not, you know, or even in person. Um, yeah, so that's that's my, my um, suspicion anyway. So, yeah, after all that um, babble, I think we'll get on with the reading and see what comes through. But, yeah, it's... Um, <clears throat> hopefully that won't give me too much grief but yeah so let's get on and see what's going on here so we've got Ceres or Ceres depending on how you say it she's an asteroid Capricorn where's Capricorn for you it's a fourth house I think Leo well that's fifth house energy Cap. Horn's 10th house energy. Um, but yeah, it's in your in your fourth house and, and um, Leo is further along in I think your eleventh house. Yeah. Ninth house. Well, that's Sag energy. See if there's any planets in your ninth ninth house too. That'll be in Gemini ninth house okay we've got a moon phase waxing gibbous all right so um <coughs> oh, gee sorry 
um, waxing gibbous that's like if it's waning it's heading towards a new moon if it's waxing it's heading towards a full moon waxing gibbous that's um, about well it's past the um, quarter the the uh, third quarter phase I think it is um, where where you where you um, needing to be challenged in terms of recommitting to your goals and ideas ideals um, dreams wishes and this is um, where you still need to work on that like um, you, you still should do your best to work with whatever you can in whatever way you can before the moon, full moon happens which will be um, by then this will be right near the end of the month I think um, Taurus that's second house energy um, but it's Taurus isn't in your second house it's probably in your where is it oh yeah second eighth yeah opposite of course Cancer. Well, that's fourth house. Fourth house being in Capricorn. Cancer's in your tenth then, yeah. Yeah, of course, because they're opposites. I have to think for a second. First house. Well, that's your rising sign. Okay, so we've only got... All right, so... <coughs> Excuse me. Oh. <coughs> Like I said, haven't had a problem at all until I started filming. <laughs> um, so I'm going to look up the asteroid and read the moon phase as well. The rest kind of explains itself or I have kind of explained it. So Ceres is um, an asteroid up the back here somewhere. Where is she? There she is. Okay. Okay, in a reading, I can't read through the phone, it's potato quality, I can't see it. Um, in a reading, things are abundant in your life right now and the potential for reaching your goals is at its peak. You just need to stay focused on things that matter most to you. Well, that's your home and half, fourth house, can see an energy. Um, your roots, what matters to you. Um don't let minor distractions get in the way of that or influence your decisions. You know what is best for you, even if it doesn't make sense to anyone else. It should never have to. Um, if you are going through a low emotional period, do your best to appreciate the beauty in the everyday. Well, you're liberalizing, so you shouldn't have a problem doing that. Um, eat nourishing foods and make beautiful art. Go for walks and reconnect with nature. Spend time with your loved ones during doing things that matter. Material items and overindulgence will not serve you right now, so avoid emotional binges. Okay. <coughs> Sorry, it's happening. <laughs> when we are children, our parents are supposed to take care of us. They should hug us when we're, when we're sad and feed us when we are hungry. At some point, we take over this parental role for ourselves, and if you're, if you're struggling getting things done it could be that a wound from your upbringing is causing you to get in your own way okay we'll see if chiron turns up we'll look at the moon phase so you've got one moon phase waxing gibbous that's waning we don't want waning at this point we want the waxing there it is no nope. we want waxing gibbous where are you waxing present i've missed a page have i where are you oh there you are <laughs> it was there all along i was looking at that not that okay see how it's heading towards the full moon and then after the full moon so yeah it, waxing gibbous will be a few days usually before a full moon so i'm, I'm guessing it's going to be right at the pointy end of um, this month for you so anyway it says here in a reading the waxing gibbous moon is all about tending to the finer details of a situation. Yeah, the flowers are blooming, but they still require your attention. That's pretty much what I was saying, just to keep moving where you can with your dreams, goals, wishes. 
calm. Enjoy the beauty. Here's the beauty again. You Okay. Enjoy the beauty, but be sure to check in frequently or your garden could get infested with mites. If you have dropped the, the ball recently, this card is a gentle reminder that you still have a chance to pick up where you left off. Yeah, see, because if, if you haven't worked with this previous square, um, first quarter square, um, then you've still got that chance. See how the moon phases? I think I said third quarter, did I? Mm, I got it wrong. Third quarter's after. Um, if you uh, da, 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 pick up where you left off, um, trying to clear or, or, sorry, trying to cheat or cut corners may work in the moment, but these shortcuts are always discovered later on. Yeah, don't do any shortcuts. Okay, so we're done with that for now because I think everything else is pretty self-explanatory so far. Okay, so let's see what else has come through for you guys. Ah, oh, Chiron. Didn't I say? Wondered if Chiron would turn up. Okay. Your healing power, empathy and ability to teach or learn remedies. Okay, it could be about that. That might be the healing that's needed. Then we have oh, Capricorn twice. So Capricorns have a focus here. Fourth house Capricorn can see an energy. Your home and family, what's going on there? Um, the energy around you is serious, materialistic and hardworking. It bestows shrewdness and cautious ambition. And the 11th house. Okay, that's Aquarian energy. I say energy with the themes. Um where the cosmos grants wishes, luck, friends and social occasions, yay. What is in your 11th house? Has that come through already? We've got 9th, 1st, Taurus. Didn't Yeah, Leo. I thought an 11th house came through. Yeah, boom. Oh, wow, Leo in the 11th. That's a pretty good placement. Okay, we'll continue on. 7th house. Well, that's Libran energy. Yes, you're Libran rising, but um, seventh house would be in Aries for you then. Pluto. Well, that's the ruler of Scorpio. Scorpio hasn't come through yet, has it? Scorpio is in your second house. Money and self-worth. Values. Okay, let's see what else. Aries. Well, Seventh house, boom, there you go. Hmm. There might be some sort of transformation in that area with your relationship house because Pluto's smack bang in the middle of both of them. Aries, seventh house, Aries. Second house, here we go. Money and self-worth. Values. And wasn't that um, Taurus? Taurus is in the 8th, isn't it, for you? Second house. Where did we get second house again? I thought we got second house again somewhere. Um, anyway, Cancer's come through. So 10th. Okay. Your, your opposites, the, um, your 10th and your 4th. Um, Cancian energy and Capricorn energy because they've doubled up. So they're the focus here. Third house. Now, did we get third house? Third house is um, about Gemini energy and communications, which is also 11th house, like because 11th house covers the um, community and we always have to communicate with the community if we're in communities. Um, that's the way they, they um, flourish. So, okay, right, now we'll get on to these cards. And these can have reversals. Hopefully you won't get any, but this is fantastic. This is upright. Midheaven is where you will get... Um, your work life
Midheaven is your work life and it's always up the top. It will say MC either around the 9th or the 10th. So that's good. Midheaven, boom, yay. It's upright, the gift. Because this is the if it's upright, it's the gift. If it's reversed, it's in the challenge. And we'll read the, from the guidebook with these guys. Woo, Jupiter's upright. Jupiter is known as the lucky planet. I mean, it can be, but it all depends on on other other things in your how in in your in your birth chart. However, it's about expansion, and this is upright as well. So it's a gift, and Jupiter is the ruler of Sag. Has Sag come through at all? Where is Sag being? Third house. Yeah, Sag is in your third house, I think. And the ruler is Jupiter, so communications will bring luck. Seventh house, again, upright, you're getting the gift. Wow, seventh house again. Okay, so we've got tenth and fourth and seventh and third. Okay, third, fourth, seventh and tenth. I mean, the second has come through as well, but I think it's just sort of reiterating what this might be about, like money and self-worth. Okay. Well, we've got an... Okay. Now, look, this is this is in um, the challenge position, but look what it is if it's upright. Tension, square, semi-square, quincunx, they're usually difficult aspects so my in my view i think that that's another good sign we'll see what the guidebook says but yeah oh you guys are okay what's his sixth house sustainability okay well this one's in reverse so we'll see what that means might mean you have to do a bit of um meditating and healing work because maybe you've sort of perhaps dropped the ball with that if you do that okay and the last one is descendant okay your descendant is opposite like your ascendant is on always on the left your descendant is on the right so because you're liberalizing your descendant is aries seventh house aries it's in the challenge mode so we'll just see what that says in the guidebook um sometimes the challenges aren't that difficult like in from the guidebook you know how the the, sometimes people might say oh i'm up for the challenge not all challenges are, are difficult um and for the most part i i really see this is a really good month for you a really positive month um let's have a look and see what the guidebook says for these guys And that just said Ascendant. I don't really need to read that because, well, okay, I'll read it. <laughs> I'll go on a tangent. But the, your, your Ascendant, your rising sign, your Libra rising, what this is all about. I'll read both and see if, if it happens to be um, anything. Like if you, you can work out if, if it relates to you at all, if it, if it resonates. Um, okay, Challenge. The front door is only one part of the house. Be willing to look beyond appearances and into the heart, but don't count on others' ability to do so too. Okay, that was the challenge. The gift is, over time, your reputation is built on what you do, not how you look. Mm hmm. Okay. So, yeah. Read it for a reason, so it might relate to someone. It might not relate to everyone, but it might relate to someone out there, um, who's a, whoever's watching. So we have mid heaven upright first. So we're reading the gift, the upright. Okay, underneath all worldly sense of ambition is a soul's longing to live out its potential. Listen to the call. Wow. And we've got Jupiter, Uranus sneaks in there. Ah, okay, I'll read you. 
Okay, again, I'll go challenge and gift and see if that relates to you guys at all because Uranus is also in retrograde, see? Um, and your rising sign is about what you what you present, how you present yourself to the world. Um, okay, or how the world sees you. Um, challenge, Uranus electrifies. It may feel like your finger is stuck in an electric socket. Um, you are anxious to change, but you can spin your wheels until you shift into the new gear. Okay, and the gift says, prepare for, well, I think it'll probably be the gift actually, prepare for an evolutionary leap. Shocking circumstances can force you to engage gifts you didn't know you had and help you transform. Um, Pluto, Scorpio energy. Uh, where did Scorpio come in for you as well? Second house. Okay. Uh, sorry, I've gone on a tangent again. Um, you are not those external attributes in transformations. You will not dissolve. A caterpillar is still internally the same creature once it becomes a butterfly. Okay, so let's go and read Jupiter. There you go. Okay, we've got the right one now. Again, it might not relate to everyone, but there might be someone out there that needed to hear that previous bit. Okay, so we've got the gift of Jupiter, yay. Um, give and you shall receive. Jupiter calls you to expand, as it does, um, your worldview, uh, 11th house, Aquarian um, community um, things. Um, Jupiter calls you to expand your worldview, so reach out and feel at one with the whole universe. Mm, yay. Reach out, yeah, reach out to whatever community you might be involved with. Yeah, this seems to be more about a community sort of thing, but there's a lot of good energy as well. So now we've got seventh house. Oh, I think I'll have to show you this one, it's off camera as well. Okay, so seventh house relationship, it's upright. Um, gift, fertilize the ground of your partnership. Feed your partner with romantic moments and fair and honorable arrangements. Well, that shouldn't be any difficulty for you since you're Libra and rising. When you are fascinated by the spirit of another, they can become fascinated with you. That sounds good. Now let's see if that is what I thought it was. Because my hope is that it actually is um, good because it's difficult when it's upright. <laughs> it's a big challenge when it's upright. So being in reverse, it's the challenge. This is a workout of body, mind and spirit. And workouts can be tiring. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. So you've got a bit of a workout, have you? To maybe do the reconnecting. Okay, let's read Sixth House and see what else makes sense. 44. Again, it might not be everyone's thing. Like there might only be one or two people that, I don't know. <laughs> Okay, so this is it upright, but it's in reverse. Sixth house. This might be where the um, challenge of body, mind, spirit sort of thing. Okay, so let's read. The challenge says, worry can give you the illusion that you're taking care of business, but it does not further your goals. Okay. So you... Where where did we see? I think that was one of the tangents I went on that we um where it said about spinning your wheels. Yeah. Yeah. Because well, we can get ourselves in a spin when we worry, 
with the illusion that we're taking care of things but not really furthering our goals. And that's probably where the challenge is. You've got to clear that bit probably a little bit of a Chiron um, thing going on. There's only, it's only come through once. So I think it's not any huge work you've got to do. Or, well, you don't have to do anything. But if you, if you um, are open to try and work through some of this, it's likely to be healing your Chiron wounds. Now, we've got Descendant that has come through 7th house Aries um, and upright it says initiation because Aries you know and because it's right opposite um, the ascendant to see that so whatever sign it would still be um, initiation because you've got to throughout life you've got to balance your rising sign your ascendant with your descendant on the other side like have a balance of the both together okay that that's the idea of it and the same with the mc at the top and the ic at the bottom work life at the top home life at the bottom you sort of balance work life prior work home life priorities that sort of thing if that makes sense hopefully i'm making some sense okay so oh we're still on sixth house i haven't um Move to descendant yet 37. Okay. All right. So the challenge is you give your power away when instead of working together, relationships, instead of working together, you ask others to be what is missing in your life, in your, well, your life, missing in yourself, same thing. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty hard hitting. Give your power away when instead of working together, you ask others to be what is missing in yourself. Right. Work on your Chiron wounds so that you're not expecting others to fill that void. Because it won't be a void once it's cleared. Because, you know, it'll be filled with nice, happy things. You've got to clear clear away. You know, it'll be filled with love and, and happiness. And then you can have your, have your um, relationships work in your favour. You know, the balance thing that Librans love, having that equilibrium that sort of balanced reciprocation kind of thing win-win outcome you know that sort of thing okay i don't know i hope that this has made sense i never really know how how people perceive it for themselves um, but anyway let's see what and that almost came through. What numerology cards? What numerology do the Libra rises? Yep, there's one. Yep, there's another one. What have we got? Self-love. Yeah. Heal the Chiron wounds so that you're not... Because um, sometimes we might not even realise we're doing it, you know, that we're doing that... Um, expecting others to fill a void that we ourselves should be the ones filling by doing that self-care work healing yeah. i think that's the focus because look you've got jupiter expanding the good mid heaven's upright so is the seventh house there so it's not all bad you can expect some good things. Is there any other numerology cards for the Libra Rises? Is there any others that need to come through? I think that's it, actually. I think we're done with this deck for now. Yep, yep. All right. Okay. 
right. What, 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 do you, what abundance messages for Libra and Spirit do you want me to know? Rises navigate the rest of January successfully. Oh, that's too many. Okay, we will get abundance messages. It's just taking a bit of time to come through, making me work through this. Okay, Libra rises. What do they need to know? What abundance messages can they get? Okay. I knew eventually they'd come through. So do we start with these or this way? I think we start this one. Okay. Don't know if it's picking it up with this, but anyway. So what if it takes a long time? So what if it's already taken longer than you thought? So what if it will still take longer? The day will nevertheless arrive as it always does when all your prior efforts, determination and persistence, the goat doesn't give up climbing the mountain, determination and persistence will seem a paltry price indeed as you are lifted irrevo irre irrevocably, irre bleh, irre irrevocably higher as if by chariots of fire into realms previously unimagined and then you'll think to yourself wow that was fast i can hear the music now the universe okay and the next one was this one okay question what do you what do rich Folk, what do you rich folk, I was going to say, there you go. <laughs> what do rich folk daydream and visualize about? Answer, yeah, whatever they want. Question, and what do poor folk daydream and visualize about? Answer, yeah, whatever they want. You're coming along, sorry, you're coming along so quickly, the universe. Yeah, so... It doesn't matter about your finances. Because um, you, I, I think there's good energy here. You don't need to be stressing about things if you have been. Um, I think you're going to have a good month, actually. Just do deal with the Chiron wounds. And then you won't feel the need to... to um, find it in others and your relationships will be so much better for it because it'll be more balanced which is what you want because you're Libra <laughs> Libra rising so much more awaits you yeah there you go there'll come a day when you look back at where you've been here we go again where the, that one yeah where you've been and where you now are and call these your warm-up years more love, more fun, more friends, more laughter, more thoughts, more things, more, more, lots more, more. You're so cute, the universe. Yes, yeah, see, this is, um, these, these decks, this deck is a bit quirky because um, it's, a, it's made as if the universe is actually talking to you specifically. Okay, let's head on over to the guardian angels and see what messages they want to bring through for you now for January. People rising. What do you want them to know for January? We'll help them navigate January in the 
best possible way for their success. They almost wanted to come. Hang on. No, oh, there you go. And there. <laughs> All right, now they're coming through. What else? Is there any other messages for the Libra Rises? To navigate January. <laughs> So we've got this one first, and that one was second. Then these two jumped on. So let's have a look and see what it says. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm too Virgo for my own good. Um, okay. Dear Guardian Angel, help me to believe that all is possible through love. Help me to help me manifest my dreams and live an inspiring and fulfilling life. Help me to feel God's presence in every moment. Help me feel eternally loved. Thank you for being always by my side. Exactly, the universe is. Intuition. Trust your intuition and know that what seems logical may not necessarily be right. Wasn't that ser series as well, that it doesn't have to make sense to everyone, it just needs to make sense to you? Um, the answer to your question lies inside your heart. Endless possibilities exist for you. Stop trying to work it all out and feel your way through. We, your angels, will guide you. Trust your feelings. What feels right is right. Oh, so feel your way through, yeah, instead of logic. So creativity. We, your angelic messengers, are here to help unleash the endless creative potential that you possess. Listen to the whispers of love inside your heart as we communicate with you through feelings and emotions. Um, let go of fear and apprehension and express the endless source of creativity you possess. Have fun and allow the inner child within you to express your true essence. All is valid. Yeah, get your inner child. Um, yeah, work, work through some things. Let your inner child out. That might be what's needed, actually, in the healing process so you can... Concentrate on your home, relationship, and work life. Yeah. Okay, so courage is the last one here. And it says, dare to be different, to make mistakes. Create for it. Here we go again. Create. Create for it is in creation that you exist. In this world of dreams that stem from the eternal heart, you are one with all creation. All is possible. Go forth and be true to yourself, for it is only through being true to you that you can be true to others. Well, yeah, I think that that pretty much puts the lid on the whole thing, really. Sort of icing on the cake kind of thing. Work on you, yourself, and any triggers or anything. Clear that away so that you can get the good coming to you by the end of the month with Jupiter with your um with your MC which is the 10th house in Cancer work, work home life so that's the ultimate for you it's the ultimate balance of um balancing working out balancing work life with home life really because they're both in the opposite signs for you. You know, the Cancian sign is in the 10th house and the Capricorn sign is in the 4th house. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I think clear this bit here so that you're not... Because um, sometimes we can automatically, without even knowing it, we can automatically be expecting others to fill voids that we could 
clear and fill ourselves with the love and then that would help our relationships move better into you know communicate better and everything communication third house sag easy going hopefully this has made sense but yeah i think i think that's that's going to be your priority and I don't think it's got to be a really big, heavy thing for you. I mean, we did have Pluto, but it only rocked up once. And we didn't really get any um, eighth house things, I don't think. No, I don't, no, we got ninth and I think it's first house. Yeah, I, I, I don't think we got eighth house. I think we just, we did get um, Pluto. But yeah, I think that that's just... It's not, I don't think it's going to be that intense for you. I think it's just a little bit of niggling things that you can tweak. And, um, yeah, and once you sort things out for yourself and give yourself that that time, that nurturing, um, and tap into your creativity because, yeah, once, once, you, once you do your um, healing work, then you'll be able to um, work with your creativity better, which will give you more self-worth. Did we have second house Taurus energy? Well, that's Scorpio, isn't it, second house? Taurus then would be in your eighth. Um, yeah, okay. Third house isn't, yeah, third house is Sag. Yeah, see, it's it's not heavy. It's not really heavy. I think it's just, yeah, I, th I think it's just um, do that bit of work on yourself. Give yourself that bit of um, self-love, healing, you know, self-love and healing. Taking that time for yourself because as ultimately you, you make time for you. The universe sees that you think you're important enough for your wishes. And therefore, there's nothing holding it back. It's when we are not treating ourselves well enough that we're telling the universe that no matter what we want to wish for, that we don't really deserve it in our own mind, you know. And so the universe goes, oh, well, okay, if, if you feel you don't deserve it, then we'll, you know, I'll wait until you do feel you deserve it and then it'll come through, you know. So it's sort of like this what's your what's your thought patterns um because doesn't matter if you're rich or poor this one was saying it doesn't matter if you're rich or poor you you know people think of all different things no matter what sort of um what's the word for it um no matter what sort of financial position they might be in um i Think of, I can't think of the word, but anyway, a status or uh, I can't think of the word, but I think you get what I mean anyway. So yeah, I think I'm being a bit of a broken record now. I think you've got the point, um, because once you once you get those niggly bits out of the way, you won't feel the need to have someone else, you know, filling the void because there won't be that void to fill because you won't feel that need. For that to happen because you would have worked on it and felt filled it for yourself and then yeah and then your relationships will work fine because you've got it you've got a lot of these upright and these were the only bit of difficulty and i think i keep harping on it because that's the thing that's the focus i think for the rest of this month for you get that sorted and then look forward to the good um on that note, I think I'll leave it here and hopefully I um, made some sense with it and hopefully this helps and I wish you all the best and good things are going to happen. Um, yeah, yeah, because the universe says so. <laughs> the universe has told you. Um, okay, so um, yeah, I wish you all the best for the rest of January and until next time, bye for now.